introduce our next speaker, um, Craig Fairweather, who is going to present about his PhD work in Social Security. Thanks very much, Tricia, and good evening, everyone. I'm going to be, go a bit shorter than uh, I was originally planning. Oops. Uh, firstly, I'd like to um, acknowledge the assistance of my co-authors in two relevant journal articles, Professor Michelle Lincoln from Sydney Uni and Dr. Robin Ramsden from Deakin University, and also acknowledge the work and the cooperation of the management and the very hard-working staff at uh, Royal Far West, and I can see one uh, alumni from there in the audience. So Royal Far West is a, a children's charity that's devoted to the health needs of rural families in New South Wales. Uh, and details of my relevant research can be found in these two uh, articles there. One published, uh, sorry, the first one there is about to be published any day now, I'm told, in Rural and Remote Health, um, looking at the experience of school executive and therapy assistants in a uh, speech pathology telehealth program. And the second one looking at uh, decreasing service inequities and particularly the experience of parents. So barriers to accessing speech pathology services are enormously compounded uh, for families in rural and remote areas of Australia be because um, even though 34 percent of the population live there, the proportions of speech pathologists in the different areas of Australia are, um, are not uh, as they should be. So in the year uh, 2014, for every 100,000 people, there were 26 speech pathologists in major cities, 20 in inner uh, rural areas, 17 in outer rural areas, 13 in remote areas, and only six in very remote areas per 100,000 people. Uh, when I became the speech pathology team leader uh, at Rolfar West over 30 years ago, I immediately made two major shifts in the service delivery model. We wanted to uh, address the tyranny of distance. And firstly, we brought parents uh, and carers, uh, instead of just the children, to where the services were being provided in the Manly area. Before that, before I took over, uh, I think a very um, unfortunate system was there where only the children were brought to where the therapist wa was and we communicated by telephone and by mail with the parents. Obviously we had to change that, we did that in 1985. And the second area we changed was we sent the speech pathologists out into rural areas and eventually 25 different towns over a 26 year period were serviced sometimes for five years, sometimes for 10 years, uh, for uh, clinical visits every year. But still the costs and the stresses of time travel limited how frequently there could be face-to-face -face interaction. So um, in the United States, uh, schools are the most common setting in which speech pathology ter teletherapy services are delivered and the effectiveness of the delivery model has been described and well documented, particularly by these, uh, these two studies here, uh, which have shown similar therapy gains to face-to-face -to -face therapy compared to uh, telehealth into schools. Overseas, there are businesses, in fact, that employ hundreds of speech pathologists, occupational therapists, and psychologists providing online services directly into schools and into people's homes, such as uh, Presence Learning and Tiny Eye are examples. And you can be a speech pathologist in New York, go home from your busy job, uh, and then be seeing online people who ha have not yet left school in Nevada or California. Okay, so there's a, a need for research, and Rolfa West's program, Come and See, was established in um, 2013, and it commenced with providing therapy services into 17 public schools, two Catholic primary schools, three preschools, and one child care center. And these were spread out across eight Western New South Wales towns and seven New England towns. 
So come and see provided fortnightly clinician guided sessions of 30 minutes each in the child's familiar environment as mentioned and programming materials were sent out for therapy activities. Uh, parents were encouraged to attend and, and also there were therapy facilitated, uh, facilitators uh, who were usually uh, school employees who would bring the ch child from the, sc the school class and back to the, the class after the session and also help in the session and very often or usually rather they provided some therapy in between the telehealth sessions. So in the research period for the two studies, the first seven months of operation, it provided intervention for 152 children aged 4 to 13. But I'm going to skip over some of these details here and just say that um, the telecommunica telecommunications technology was web-based. We used uh, mainly Adobe Connect, an online platform for web-based video conferencing. Oops. Back. Uh, here you see the clinician uh, in Manly, she can share the screen uh, of her, uh, she can see the child rather, and she can also uh, see on the other screen some documents that are shared with the child. How do I get rid of this, please? Patricia? Sorry, I just hit the wrong. Thank you, thank you. So, um, you can see the two screens here and a document shared on the, um, on the screen. So, in the two studies, the research questions we looked at, did participation in come and see teletherapy program improve children's speech and language skills after up to six treatment sessions and what were the views of parents and carers from remote communities of this program's feasibility and acceptability and in the second study we looked at the perceptions of the school executive staff and the therapy assistants about the feasibility and acceptability of the program and the nature of their satisfaction and dissatisfaction. We uh, we created or we examined two types of data, uh, quantitative data drawn from children's goal attainment scales at the review assessments and qualitative data based on a thematic analysis of interviews with the government school principals and assistant, and assistant principal therapy facilitators and parents. I'm going to cut uh, some of the comments short here in order to get on to the meat of what we're most interested in, which is the um, qualitative results, the thematic analysis of the interviews. And from those interviews, we were able to, um, we were able to find 10 themes. And from those themes, I'm going to take uh, some teletherapy take homes and tips. Firstly, looking at um, the school executive and therapy facilitators' unmet speech pathology needs. They were concerned and motivated by the unmet need for speech pathology services for pupils in all of the grades in the schools. Services were either entirely absent at the school or even the town or restricted to a few children. Visiting services were often perceived as inconsistent in their scheduling and in their approach and there was perceived to be insufficient demonstration and explanation of therapy programming. They believed that many parents didn't seek the support for the children from speech pathologists due to travel. So we look at the um, take homes. We can provide, from, the, uh, from our findings from the research, we can provide telehealth uh, services into schools that are acceptable and motivating for principals and therapy facilitators. 
And it's important to make a case beforehand that telehealth services can provide clinician-led se sessions that, are, uh, that provide a service to more children more frequently and more consistently than the previous services. And we need to provide a regular report to the principal with statistics on these parameters that will help the principal justify the costs involved. Theme two, building relationships. They saw the value of building stronger relationships among all the stakeholders through more effective lines of communication and well-supported strategies for increasing engagement with parents and uh, carers. The therapy facilitators reported increased satisfaction and motivation from successful collaboration between all stakeholders. So there are take-homes take -home from what they said in the interviews. Firstly, orientation sessions for all the parents in groups or individually need to happen to build rapport with the clinician, uh, to help the uh, parent examine the computer equipment and the headphones uh, if they're going to be used, and a separate orientation for children to the equipment, the clinician, and the therapy facilitator to a session between the therapy facilitator, parent and clinician to discuss the child further and build relationships of respect and trust are needed. Three, training from the clinician on ways of making their therapy facilitator role more effective, how to increase rapport with the children and gain their cooperation and keeping the children's attention centered in practice sessions held between uh, the telehealth sessions were absolutely vital. Five, there need to, needed to be scheduled opportunities for the facilitators to impart their knowledge and views about the child's difficulties and important events in their lives, and to make suggestions for improving the sessions. The therapy facil facilitators felt underutilized in that regard. They also identified that a weakness of the program was uh, a, a reduced mechanism or insufficient mechanism for teachers to contribute um, into the collaboration and into feedback. The principals wanted more negotiation of their level of inclusion in information, information flow. So with the school executive, two themes were um, prominent. One was telehealth's advantages and the take-homes are that the positive experiences of other principals are useful discussion points when negotiating the service. They welcome the program as a means of fulfilling aspects of their responsibilities as principal, especially legislative requirements around disability. The telehealth sessions proved easier to schedule uh, at regular and convenient times or to reschedule around school events and child illness than their experience of other services. Therapy appointments went ahead even if a family member could not attend the sessions. And the relative frequency meant the school staff were more confident in program activities. The activities appeared to be more easily individualized because they were more frequent. The computer technology was uh, considered to be an asset as the fun involved was seen to be engaging and motivating for the children. And it also offered increased privacy for children and families over taking the child out of school to another site or having a clinician seen with the child at the school. And this was reported to be important for small communities. And children were seen to be uh, more comfortable, or perceived to be more comfortable with attending therapy at school than elsewhere. Okay, theme four, telehealth disadvantages. Even though few sessions were observed by the school executive, participants believed that there had to be some disadvantages with engagement, glitches, and staff utilization. So a take home from that is that we need to demonstrate for principals 
that we are able to maintain the engagement and responsiveness of the clients, that we can study how others have done this, or that we have studied how others have done this, and we've included those into our work, things such as the use of digital resources and digital games. And we need to make uh, contingency plans for uh, technological glitches and be understanding of the other responsibilities and the limits for the people who are being therapy facilitators. Thank you. So another theme was supports. The therapy facilitators wanted uh, written agreements on time commitments, requirements and lines of communication and control, work scheduling arrangements, adjustments to duty statements and the uh, sources of material resources to be provided by the school. Some of the facilitators raised uh, the issue of Indigenous families, highlighting the proportion of Indigenous children attending the school and the advantages of Indigenous staff interacting with those families. So adaption of paediatric teletherapy to the cultural differences of rural indigenous communities is an important area for consultation with local stakeholders and for future research. Thirdly, we need to ensure that teletherapy will be provided in a quiet room without distractions, but with a telephone and office supplies, adequate heating and child protection issues taken into account. And we need to make sure that the materials for the therapy are emailed to the, um, to the therapy facilitators with sufficient time, such as a week. With parents, oops, sorry. Uh, parents spoke to us about um, the practicality and convenience of the program. that the children and parents learnt more effectively through the frequent demonstration and feedback compared to uh, the experience of visiting services, uh, some minor difficulties that they had with the technology, and the need for greater co uh, communication all around between all stakeholders. So the take homes are that the experiences of parents outlined in Australian studies as well as in overseas ones are useful in making proposals to rural communities. The evidence describes potential, um, the evidence, um, describes potential decreases in costs and stress and increases in frequency of service. I have some tips for establishing um, a telehealth service in schools and anyone who wants to email me um, I'll send it to them. And uh, now time for questions. <laughs>